Now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, it's time for a reset for the Avs. We've won every game on the road, so I guess we we're kind of due for a, a tough night. And the lightning strikes back in game three. We're live in Tampa as the Avs look ahead to game four. A fitting final tribute for a diehard Avs fan. We had him in a little baggie. We got Kyle over, <laughs> over the, the glass and onto the ice. Now we're talking to the best friend who paid the price for a special send off at Ball Arena. And today is officially the first day of summer. Governor Polis is making plans to make sure we can keep the pools open amid a lifeguard shortage. Uh, what he plans to announce today coming up. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Brady. Yeah. And I'm Brian Sanders live in Tampa along the Riverwalk this morning where a lot of Lightning fans have been uh, jogging by and uh, shouting their cheer for their team that won last <laughs> night as the Avs try to recover from a game three loss. We'll talk about all things Avs coming up. Meanwhile, as I'm out here sweating it out in the Florida humidity, Lisa is in the nice, <laughs> arid, cool climate of Red Rocks with a special guest, Lisa. Yeah, you know what's funny is uh, you were at what a, a heat index of about 105 yesterday there in Tampa. Now it's like 95 today, not as bad, but you're right. It's beautiful here in Denver this morning and from Red Rocks. What a great way to, to kick off summer. We're looking at temperatures this morning. Take a look from City Park in the low to mid 50s primarily uh, up and down the front range. You're going to find a little bit of cloud cover early on here. Winds coming in out of the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And here over the next couple of uh, hours, we'll see those winds pick up. It's been a little breezy. We'll see winds between about 20 and 25 miles per hour this afternoon. Uh, upper 70s by 1 o'clock, and then we're hitting highs right around 82 here in Denver. 70s for southeastern Colorado. Cooler in the mountains today, too. You're going to find more 60s than 70s right in through the central high country. It's going to heat up, though, through the end of the week. We'll take a closer look at that coming up here in a few minutes and a closer look at your Super 7 day. We've got a pretty busy weekend ahead with the Pride Parade here in town. And we will have some road closures with that along Colfax and downtown. Right now, we do have some busy areas, including up up along Along Highway 36, you see some slower traffic up by the mall on that westbound side. There's a report of a crash right around here, right around Flatiron Circle. So that's why you're seeing traffic bunch up a little bit on the map. You can also see that too. Not seeing long lasting delays, just a little bit of a bunched up traffic situation right there. Also had some long traffic uh, or some delayed traffic here going across westbound University. Westbound Hamden to University with a crash there for you here this morning. Real busy in Aurora. Earlier problems there cleared off. New problem up on the north side, southbound I-25 near 104th. And you can see how heavy the traffic is into downtown Denver. So it's been a really busy drive uh, in a lot of spots with a lot of traffic, a lot more than yesterday. This is the area we have a, uh, you might have seen the smoke just off of E-470, I-70. We have a building fire out there. Nicole has more information about it right now. Yeah, uh, this, this uh, news broke. About an hour ago, Air Tracker 7 is still over this fire at a garage. Uh, this is earlier video, so the flames actually are out now and mostly it's just smoke. It, it seems like they were able to stop this from spreading to the home uh, attached to this garage. Uh, firefighters, though, still out there this morning again, east of E-470, south of I-70 in a neighborhood there. We'll keep you updated on that as we get any updates. Well. Put away the brooms. There will be no sweep in the Stanley Cup final. The Avs are regrouping today ahead of game four, which is again tomorrow in Tampa. So let's get out to Brian hmm. Sanders on the Tampa River Walk. Uh, Brian, last night's outcome was certainly not completely unexpected. Yeah, they live to fight another yeah. day. It's OK, but it maybe a little ambitious to expect a sweep against the two time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the Lightning certainly came to play last night and delivered quite the counterpunch to Saturday's shutout, 7 0 shutout, game two win for the Avs. The Avs had their scoring chances. They just couldn't put enough in the back of the net. Started strong. They actually scored first. They had another goal negated by an offside call, but the Bolts were able to score. Uh, the next three, they responded in a big way. In fact, so big that head coach Jared Bednar pulled Darcy Kemper from goalie and replaced him with Pavel Franco after the Lightning's fifth goal. One of the big things is I thought, not that we didn't compete, because I liked some of our compete tonight, some of the things we did, but I think we had an advantage when it came to the competitive spirit in game one and game two, and tonight they had it. They played with a little bit more desperation. 
Yeah, they certainly didn't want to go down in a 3-0 hole, so today is a practice day. We will hear from the team and Coach Bednar about who he will start at goalie for Game 4. Will it be Kemper or Franco? We will find out. So as the Avs regroup today, Avs fans are staying positive about the series. The Avs still lead the series two games to one. The watch party at Ball Arena last night was packed. Both the first and second levels were completely sold out. And we had a chance to talk to one lifelong fan who says this is just a minor bump in the road for the team. I think they fought, but obviously Tampa Bay came out and they uh, pushed back after last game. But I think the Avs have matured a lot over the last couple of years. And this is the year that we bounce right back after a loss like that. And we're going to take a win at home. Yeah, so they have a chance to hoist the Stanley Cup on their home ice with a Game 5 guaranteed back at Ball Arena on Friday. Uh, we know that another uh, passionate fan will be with them in spirit on the ice. Interesting story here, Denver 7's Christian Lopez uh, spoke to a man who spread his friend's ashes on the Avs home ice just as the Zamboni was driving by. Yeah, Brian, his best friend loved the abs and passed away suddenly. So he decided to spread his ashes on the ice because he said that's exactly where his friend would want to be. Ryan Clark's best friend Kyle passed away just before Christmas Eve last year. They had been friends for over a decade. They loved going to watch the abs together. Kyle was even the best man at Ryan's wedding. And in January, after the funeral, Kyle's parents invited Ryan to an abs game and he asked them if he, they could bring some of Kyle's ashes with them. And before the game, he and Kyle's stepdad got up close to the rink and they spread some of the ashes on the ice. But later on, an usher did come up to them and Ryan was ultimately banned from all avalanche events. He said right before it all happened, he was prepared to go to jail that day if he had to. You have no regrets. You would do it all over None. again. Oh, I'll do it all. I'd do it all over again with the biggest smile on my face like I did last time. Like, because I know in my heart, that's where he wanted to be. Like we weren't expecting for, you know, to lose him in any way, shape or form. And that happened so unexpectedly. And then when the, per when the opportunity presented itself, I couldn't turn it down. And so again, like I said, no regrets whatsoever. And he didn't face any charges or anything like that. And he's not banned from all events here at Ball Arena, just anything that is AV related for the rest of the season. Reporting live in Denver this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Hmm. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, hockey fans are a passionate bunch. What, what can you say? It'll make you do some crazy things. Meanwhile, here along the Riverwalk, we've heard a lot of uh, cheers for the lightning as people jog by, but we've also seen a handful of Avs fans who made the trek from Colorado, so that's been great to see, Nicole. Yeah, I, you've got the Avs logo on your shirt there, so they know who you are, right? Yeah, they know as soon as they run by. As a matter of fact, some have made multiple passes just to heckle me. Oh. <laughs> Hecklers. Okay. It's okay. Okay, Brian. Yeah, you're, we're, we're going to be heckling them uh, after tomorrow, maybe. If you were hoping, unfortunately, to watch Game 4 at Ball Arena's watch party, uh, bad news, they've already sold out tickets for the game tomorrow. But you can hold a watch party of your own and watch Game 4 right here on Denver 7. Our team coverage will begin bright and early at 4.30 a.m. Our special pregame show is at 5.30 p.m. And Trujillo live at Amelie Arena. Puck drops at 6.00. Governor Polis says he'll make an announcement today about keeping pools open across our state this summer. Many communities are facing lifeguard and other staff shortages. The governor will be at Central Recreation Center in Aurora today with uh, other city leaders. Uh, we don't really know at this point what exactly he's going to announce and how he plans to keep the pools open. A Loveland family needs some help after their truck was stolen in Lakewood while they were visiting their son at the ICU at St. Anthony Hospital. The family uses the truck to store tools for Casey's Flooring Company. They were also going to use it to pull a camper so they could stay closer to the hospital and avoid paying for a hotel. We got sick to our stomach and all we could do is cry because there's, I literally don't think there's anything else that we could take. We just, our souls are just crushed and there's like nothing left for us to do. 
Really, really hurting that family. Insurance is only giving them a half of the vehicle's value, $15,000, uh, which Casey says is not enough to buy a truck of that size. You can go to the Denver 7 Gives page on the DenverChannel.com and help the Coons family. Just select the drop down Coons Family Truck Stolen to make a donation. Today is the first official day of summer. Right now, we're getting almost 15 hours of daylight. And tonight, when it gets dark, uh, you may want to look up for the first time since 2004, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are aligned. Uh, you'll be able to see that above the eastern horizon every morning through the end of this month. The best time to see it is 45 minutes to an hour before sunrise. The bidding war continues for Spirit Airlines, the latest offer from JetBlue as it tries to beat out Denver-based Frontier. And you can rock out at Red Rocks while still being green. We're taking a closer look at the steps employees there take to keep the shows and scenery clean.